Hey, YouTube. I uh, went seeing The Hobbit this weekend. Did you guys go see it? Uh, who went out and seen it? Anybody? 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 A lot of people did, I guess. Uh, so, let's talk about this movie. I want to talk about the film. I also want to talk about the preview in front of it. Uh, if you went to go see it at IMAX in 3D, you got a clip of Star Trek Into Darkness. And it was actually kind of two clips. So, I want to talk about Star Trek first, and then we'll talk about The Hobbit. So... Star Trek Into Darkness. Very interesting. I like what I've seen for the most part. Uh, it, the clip is kind of broken. I don't know. I'm presuming that these parts are going to happen in different portions of the film. I don't think they're back-to-back -back parts. The first part is a family in London, and they got a little girl who's obviously terminal with some kind of disease. They don't go into it. And Benedict Cumberbatch's character, who is he? We don't know. We still don't know. Walks out, and he says he's got a cure for the daughter. Well, this is kind of uh, pu pushing me towards him being either con or possibly the guy that creates Khan, uh, that starts the eugenics stuff. But I don't know, um, because that was supposed to happen way before Star Trek. So it could be a totally different character. I don't know. I know it's not uh, the Mitchell character, because he has nothing, nothing, any kind of background like that. So I, I really doubt it's the Mitchell character. I... Also, do not believe it is Kirk's brother, because he's sporting his English accent out in the open and pretty broad, so I really doubt that's his brother. I'm, I'm pushing either for Khan or, or starting the eugenics. I don't know. It's just, it's very strange. Definitely not like the original, which is kind of weird. I know this is a reset universe, however... Khan still would be Khan. Uh, there wouldn't be a change in that lineage because he would find him in the Botany Bay out, out in space. He'd be somewhere in space. So unless they just throw all that to the wind and say, we're going to do whatever we want to do. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, thoughts on that? Anybody? Um, yeah. Uh, the other scene was kind of interesting. They're trying to save some primitive species some funny bits with Kirk and Dr. McCoy and Spock, and he's putting this giant ice cube into the volcano and trying to stabilize the volcano to save the species. But they're real strict on Prime Directive. We can't, you know, show them who we are and we're some advanced people trying to help you, blah, 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 Prime Directive, Prime Directive, Prime Directive, which is kind of stupid because wouldn't the Prime Directive say just let the people die? So I'm not sure what their connection into the film is. So we'll have to see what goes on with that. Overall, it looked pretty decent. I'm interested to see how it goes, where it goes, all that kind of good stuff. Now, The Hobbit. It's a long one. It's a pretty good. It, it's, it's, it's funny because I walked... I, the film started at 1 o'clock, and then we had about a 10-minute preview of Star Trek. So it's just under three hours. I walked out at four o'clock on the dot. So, and it really didn't feel that long. I really got engrossed in the film. I did like the movie. It has a very good feel to the Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. They really kind of go back. It was interesting to see, and there are some spoilers in this conversation, so if you haven't seen it, you don't want any kind of spoilers, you better stop watching. I like how they go to the party right before the party for Fellowship of the Ring in this. And they set up for the opening scene to Fellowship of the Ring. And, which is nice because it was stuff from the books that was left out of the first film. So that was nice to see an added little scene in there like that. And, you know, seeing Frodo and, and old Bilbo and all that kind of good stuff. And I like how they use, they eventually get to the, uh, you know, there was a hole in the ground 
and it was a hobbit hole, you know, not a dirty, sandy, dusty hole, but, you know, a hobbit hole. I liked how they kind of use that verbiage uh, to start it off, help kick start it off. In, you know, the marking, it, it's very close to the book. It's, it's not exactly the same. They kind of take some of the cheese out of it here and there, like... You don't get the tra la la down in the valley as they go down to the Valley of the Elves and Rivendell, and but we do get the dwarves singing uh, over the Misty Mountains cold, so that's kind of cool. Very, and it, we we also get the uh, you know bend the forks and crack the plates. That's what Bilbo Baggins hates. We get that song at Bilbo's house, which is awesome because it's kind of like a, a Scottish or Irish. Uh, you know, drinking song is very, very cool, very funny, and uh, that was pretty cool. I did like that. Overall, I mean, they follow it pretty good. I what I thought might have been Tom Bombadil actually turns out to be uh, was it uh, Radagast the Brown, the Brown Wizard, who that character is very interesting with the bird poop and yeah, he's very, very odd. And they make a joke that he eats mushrooms, so he's kind of out there. Uh, whereas in the Lord of the Rings, um, Gandalf was a pot smoker because he was smoking the halfling's weed. <laughs> and uh, so that was kind of funny. The return of uh, Sar uh, yeah, Saruman was kind of nice. I didn't expect to see Chris Lee in there. Uh, somehow I missed that, I think. And I mean, it, it, follow it follows pretty well. The, the trolls are in there turning to stone and all that kind of good stuff. Now, they did make some adjustments with this, like the goblins that are or orcs or whatever you want to call them. They kind of mix the verbiage up a little bit here and there, and um, they add the word goblin in. But they pretty much refer to them as orcs, like they did in Lord of the Rings. They have this pale orc going after Thorin. And... I don't know if that's from some of the other background story books or what, but they end up being the orcs that hunt them down around the trees, and the trees are on fires, and they have the, the pine cones and all that kind of stuff. That was really cool. But So they kind of tie that in. They brought them in that way as a, a, an alternate... Uh, villain or an additional villain uh, into the plot series. The Necromancers in it. Uh, they mention him in it. I'm sure he'll have a much larger role in the second film. The Giant Eagles were back. That was kind of cool. We drop off right at Mirkwood at the end of the film, which is pretty logical to me. And I'm wondering in the second film if we're going to drop off with the death of Smog and have the third film be the Battle of the Five Armies. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when, when that all comes around. Now, some things I didn't care for in the films. I don't like how half of the dwarves look like dwarves that you would see in the Lord of the Rings that they've shown us so far. And then half of them don't. Like uh, Killian, Philly, and Thorin just look like humans. Uh, they have zero dwarf about them, and I just, it's, ugh, that annoyed me. I didn't like that, and I know they're trying to make the dwarves look different, and, and everybody looks a little bit different, but they did not look dwarvish at all. I did not like that. That was probably my biggest gripe with the film. Other than that, everything was pretty good. I, I really did enjoy it. The 3D looked fantastic. It's, it's a good kickoff, I think. It's going to be a nice trilogy, and I think it's going to be my favorite of the two trilogy sets. I think I liked this a lot better than I did The Lord of the Rings. I've always liked The Hobbit novel better than I did The Lord of the Rings books. It's a simpler storyline, um, and it's not so grandiose, and it doesn't drag. It's quick, and it's simple, and... There aren't a lot of characters to overload the story. And I think that's why I've always liked The Hobbit a little bit better. Now, they also tie this into the Lord of the Rings trilogy 
uh, really setting up with the ring and the return of Saruman or uh, uh, return of Sauron and and all that good jazz and you know the oh there's doom coming and this and that and the other and uh, really kind of setting you up for the Lord of the Rings, which is okay. It's kind of some of that background stuff like when Gandalf would leave here and there. Maybe you know those kind of things. Some some things that they mention here and there in the book that we get to see. So, sure, I'll buy that. I'll take it. It it was it was good filler because they're going to have to thicken this up a bit to make it into a trilogy, which is going to be interesting on what's going on. I was surprised uh, having not seen Orlando Bloom's character, uh, Legolas. Uh, he was not, and I was expecting him in Rivendell, but after the film, I kind of thought, well. He wasn't part of the elves of Rivendell. I think he's going to be in Mirkwood uh, with the Elf King in, in Mirkwood. So we'll see in the second film if that's the case. Because I know he is in the film, and that's about the only place I can think of him actually being. So we'll see what happens. All in all, though, like I said, uh, pretty cool. Definitely check it out. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you're definitely going to like it. If you're not a Lord of the Rings fan, I, I don't know, you know, if, if you like fantasy or, or, or adventure, that kind of stuff, you'll like it. If you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings, although I'm not really sure who hasn't seen those films, uh, you know, it, they've been touted as the Star Wars of this generation, and I can see that. I, I, can, I can definitely see that, and I guess this is Peter Jackson's pre-trilogy, so like episodes... One, two, and three, right? So, yeah, overall, I, I did like it. Uh, I did not see it in the 64 frame. Is it 64 frames? The, the fast, the high high rate version, it was uh, the 24 frame. No, 48 frame. It's 48 frame. I did not see it in that format. I saw it in the IMAX 24 frame format, which is just fine. I heard some bad critiques on that frame rate. If you've seen it in that frame rate, uh, you know, let me know. Leave a leave a note. Leave a video. I'd like to know what you think of that frame rate. Is it weird and moves too quick? Does it help the 3D in it? What are your thoughts on it if you've seen it in comparison to other films? That'd be really interesting uh, to to know that because we we don't have they're not playing that here in Indianapolis. So, you know, other than that. Yeah, it's definitely a good flick. Go check it out. Uh, if nothing else, if you know, check out for that Star Trek uh, clip. I don't know if it's out. I don't know if the clip itself is out on YouTube for the the Trek, but it's definitely cool. It was. I didn't expect. I expected a trailer. I didn't expect that long of a clip in front of it. So that was kind of nice. A, a nice little added uh, bonus there for sure. So, thanks for watching, guys. What did you think of the film? What did you think of the Star Trek clip? Leave a comment. Make a video. Uh, let's get a discussion on it and have a great week. And the holidays are coming up, so you better watch out. Better not cry. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Little Ghostbusters are for you. So have a good one, guys.